He is mine. He is mine. Joy in my soul. Peace in my mind. He is mine. He is mine. Jesus, I know he is mine. He is mine. He is mine. Joy in my soul. Peace in my mind. He is mine. He is mine. Jesus, I know he is mine. He is mine. He is mine. Joy in my soul. Peace in my mind. He is mine. He is mine. Jesus, I know he is mine. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Sister Wiggins. Good morning, Sister Green. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Ford. God bless you, Mother Street. Praise the Lord. Good morning. God bless you, Tracy. Good morning. God bless you, Deacon and Sister Morris. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Martin. God bless you, Kathy. God bless you, Sister Jan. God bless you, Evangelist Pettiford. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Grenage. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Felix. God bless you, Missionary Johnson. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Wardlow. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Lisa. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Cheek. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord, and welcome to Morning Prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. Please forgive me for being just a couple of minutes tardy, but we thank God for his goodness, his mercy, his grace in our lives. Thank God for another day that the Lord has made. This is indeed the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. We are grateful to the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and for all that the Lord has done. And thankful to all of you for joining us today by way of this Facebook live video. Um, as always, if you have a prayer request, you can place it in the chat. And we will take those before the Lord in prayer. And if it's of a more private nature, please send it to either the Refuge Temple inbox or to my inbox, which is just simply Reginald Davis. And we will carry all of those, all of our prayer requests we take before the Lord. Um, thankful to God and praying that everyone is dry and safe. I, I know they're predicting inclement weather and we're praying for our brothers and sisters in Texas who have been inundated in just a severe storm and that same storm is heading in this direction and we're praying for God's covering and protection upon each and every one of us. I want to continue in this um, book of 2 Corinthians and I want to move over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 today. Chapter number 9 is where I'd like for us to go and if you would join us at verse number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to read beginning at verse 6. One of the reasons why I particularly enjoy 2 Corinthians is because it deals with a lot of practical matters relative to our faith. We've seen this as Paul deals with forgiveness, as Paul deals with restoration, as he deals with the newness that we enjoy in Christ Jesus, and um, as we even dealt with repentance on yesterday. And now we're going to deal with another, I guess, practical, but can be sometimes a controversial issue. And that is the issue of, um, of giving. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about sowing and reaping. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he is purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the ch a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things 
may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given the, to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. His righteousness remaineth forever. And let me read verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of of your righteousness. So let's talk about sowing and reaping. Um, sowing and reaping is a biblical principle that applies um, to everything in life. It, it is not just, and I'm going to say this, even giving is not just about money. A lot of times we dilute giving and, it, and boil it down to just being about dollars and cents. And there's so much more involved in the mindset, in the mentality of a giver than just the dollars and the cents. There's more to giving than just tithing. A lot of people want to spend a lot of emphasis on tithing. And one of my deacons said to me, and I thought it was powerful. He said, tithing is the bare minimum. It is just the 10%. And there's so much more to giving than just giving a tithe. Um, and that's true. But at the core of the giving principle are probably two very basic elements of your faith. And that is your love for God and your faith in God. And if you're struggling with the concept of giving, and with how to give and with what to give and, to, and with how much to give, you're really struggling in some instances with your faith and with your love, your faith and your love. Because, you know, what you love, you support. It's just a basic element. What you love, you support. What you love, you give towards. Um, someone said the other day, and I quoted it in um, our Sunday evening gathering, that you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Say it again. You can give without loving, but you cannot love and not give. Which means that, yes, yeah, somebody can just hand you something. They can give you a gift. They can give you money. They can give you some type of commodity and not love you. And that's entirely possible. And there are people that give in church, but they don't really love God. There are people that give in church, but they don't love God. But it's impossible to love God or anybody else and not give. That's an impossibility. Because God so loved the world that he gave. So how can you love God or anybody else and not give? It's a part of the equation that your love is reflected by your capacity to give. Along with that is the element of faith. That if I truly trust God, I just don't trust him with my life or my health or my emotional stability. I also trust God with my substance. Because my giving is a reflection of the fact that, yes, I trust God. I trust that, number one, he is the source of everything that I possess. I would not have anything if the Lord had not given it to me. I would not possess anything if God had not made it possible for me to receive. He's the source. It came from him. And even part of the giving process is my tangible reminder that everything I have came, comes from God. What does the word say? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He has everything. He possesses everything. He owns everything. He even owns what I have. What, what I have, he gave to me. I didn't get it myself, but God gave it to me. So these two elements my love for God and my faith in God drives my giving. And, and I would say that you have to actively um, work on your expressions of love for God 
and you have to work on your faith in God. Because if either one of these are deficient, it is going to make giving anything, giving any to anybody, giving to any cause, it's going to make it challenging because you lack love or you lack faith. So, and, 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 if, and if you're struggling with the concept of giving, and if giving bothers you, and if giving makes you nervous or uncomfortable, or if giving somehow hurts you, you have to go back and, and examine what is what am I in love with and what do I believe in? Who am I in love with and who do I believe in? Because those two elements have to be a part of the giving process. So Paul does speak in this sense. And, and you know, we, we, you know, we get very uncomfortable talking about money. But Jesus talked about money. And the apostles talked about money. And Paul himself talked about money. And so you can't really discuss faith and not discuss the totality of faith. And the, the totality of your faith is revealed by what you do with the blessings God has placed in your hand. And so Paul writes and deals with this issue of giving with the Corinthian church. And he makes a point, and this is one of the principles I want to share. Verse 6, but I say unto you, he that soweth sparingly shall also shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. There is no way, saints, that you can sow in stinginess and reap in abundance. It's not possible. It, it, it goes against even the law of nature itself. That if you go out into your garden and you only drop a few, one seed in each little pod, you're going to get one plant. It's that simple. You're not going to get an abundance of harvest when you sow lightly. And the same principle applies in the spiritual realm. That if here's one principle. First of all, you cannot sow and reap the same seed in the same season. Listen to me. You cannot sow and reap the same seed in the same season. If I sow, because it takes time for seeds to develop. So the only way I can live in a state of abundance, I have to always so, see, I, I, I'm right now, some of you are being blessed right now by seeds you sowed years ago. Some of you are being blessed right now by seeds you sowed in the last season. And they've come to harvest and now you're being blessed. And if you want to be blessed in the next season, you have to do what? Sow in this season so that you can be blessed. It's impossible for you to sow and reap from the same seed in the same season. You have to sow now for what you want to reap later, and you're reaping now from what you sowed in the past. All right? That's a biblical principle. And so that's why the only way I can live in continual harvest, I have to live in continual sowing. And I have to give treat myself to the discipline of sowing bountifully. Because if I sow sparingly, if I sow stingily, if I sow with a, with a grudging spirit, I'm already hindering and I'm already stopping my harvest. And saints, I don't know about you, but I need a harvest. Uh, oh God, I need a harvest. You need a harvest. And the only way we can walk in the harvest, we have to sow in the mindset of the harvest. I tell saints sometimes, and people don't believe it, but it's true. You need to give. Like you want to live. You need to give like you want to live. Because sometimes, and this is a faith issue, sometimes we give just out of our lack. And you don't give out of your lack, you give out of your faith. You know, I, I'll tell you a serious story. Probably about, this has been well over 20 years ago. Um, I had a decent job, but it didn't pay a whole lot. Um, was able to make it. Um, but God was trying to bless me. God was really trying to bless me. And so as the new year began, the Lord said something to me in prayer. He said, you need to start, you need to increase your giving. Now, I was already a tither. I was already the first to stand to give. But the Lord said, you need to increase your giving. And so instead of giving $10, I started giving 20. Instead of giving 20, I started giving 50. Instead of giving 50, I started giving 100. I started increasing my giving. And I did it solely on the command of the Lord. He told me to do it, so that's why I did it. 
did not know that in a few months I would walk into a new job doing the exact same thing I was doing in my old job, but literally, literally bringing home $1,000 more a month take home, not gross, take home. My check jumped $1,000 above what I was doing before, but it started with the sewing. It started with the sewing. The next miracle that you're going to receive in your life is going to begin with how you sow. The next harvest is going to begin with how you sow because it is a biblical principle. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. That means it's always going to be just enough, just a little bit, just a little bit here, just a little bit there. And if that's the way you want it, that's fine. Keep sowing sparingly. But if you want to see abundant harvest and if you want to see God provide in abundance, you have to begin to give in abundance and you have to begin to give in the spirit that God has everything. How can I outgive a God that has everything? How can I outdo a God? There's, it, it is an old song that you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. And, and, and you know, some of us say, well, Lord, I don't even want to win that, that contest. You just keep on giving. But the reality is if you want to see the Lord create abundance in your life, you have to create a, abundance in your faith and your love and abundance in your sowing. But look at what verse 7 says. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So your giving, listen to me, should be a prayerful um, encounter. It shouldn't just be me reaching in my wallet and throw something out. Shouldn't be that. It, and, and, it, and, and of course, tithing is the biblical element, but it is, is the biblical requirement. But above that, he says, every man purpose. In other words, look at your resources. Look at your faith. Look at what you want God to do and purpose. Make a determined decision. Make an intentional decision about your giving and then so let him give. Purpose and give. Purpose and give. You know, it's very rare that in, in, in my personal um, ministry or in our local church that I set numbers for people. Because I really think giving ought to be a purposeful event that you really think, you really pray, you really consider. And from that, you give. Because then it becomes a covenant between you and God. It's not because the preacher asked me for $25 or the preacher asked me for $100 or the preacher asked me to sow a seed of whatever. But it's because I have purpose. I have prayed. I have um, focused my attention. I have looked at my resources. And so I have given. And then he gives you the attitude because the attitude matters. The attitude matters. Oh, God, saints, the attitude matters. Not grudgingly. Don't give and then get mad about it. If you're going to get mad about what you give, hold your money because it's cursed. If you're going to get mad about your service, hold your service because it's cursed. Don't ever do anything with a grudging, grin, um, um, vengeful, angry attitude because it taints the offering. It taints the gift. It taints the sacrifice. Don't allow yourself to be tainted in your giving by allowing some, some negative spirit to be a part of that. And don't give of necessity. I tell people all the time, and, and this is not a boast, and this is not um, an arrogant statement, that if you don't give, you won't stop ministry. If you choose not to give, you will not, you you're by yourself will not stop ministry. All right. So I'm never going to get up and tell people, oh, saints, if you don't give, the church is going to shut down. I'm not going to tell anybody that. And there have been days when our church had no money, when our church had no resources, when our church didn't know how we were going to meet the mortgage or meet the light bill. But God had a way and he always made a way. So I don't ever tell people because guess what? God will raise up somebody. If God could send Peter to the, to the fish to get money for his taxes, God will and can take care of his house and take care of his ministry. So it's not grudgingly, it's not necessity, for God loveth, look at this, the cheerful giver. What's the attitude? What's the mindset? What's the mentality? Because if your mentality is anger, if your mentality is stinginess, if your mentality is out of... um fear, then you're never going to be blessed. There are some people who tie, but they never get blessed. Why? Because they never fix their attitude. God loves the cheerful giver. 
or in the Greek, the hilarious giver. You ought to be able to laugh as you give, to celebrate as you give, to rejoice as you give, because you are sowing into God's economy. And in God's economy, there is always going to be abundance. Oh my God, there is always going to be abundance. I, I, I'm a living witness, saints, and I've got to close because it's time to pray, but I'm a living witness of somebody who has come, and I'll be honest, I've come out of poverty. I'm not going to lie. I've come out of food stamps, Section 8, hallelujah, public assistance, the help of the saints, living in poverty. That's my story. But I, but from the very beginning of my walk with God, even as a child, the Lord taught me, my grandmother taught me, my mother taught me the blessing of sowing. That no matter how little your seed is, if that's what God has given you, sow that seed. Hallelujah. And if you sow that seed, a bigger seed is coming. And with a bigger seed comes a bigger harvest. So learn, learn this principle now that God loves that cheerful giver. Let's pray. Lord, we love you today. We honor you. We bless you. We adore you. We thank you, God, for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, oh God, for being clothed and being in our right minds. We thank you, God, oh Shataye, Shatanobo, Shataye, for health and for strength. And we thank you, God, for this word. Lord, we thank you because, Father, you, you've taught us principles, oh God, that mean so much. We give because we love you. We give, my God, because we trust you. And we trust you and we love you because first you loved us. Oh, hallelujah. And we trust you, God, because you have never failed us. You have always shown yourself to be the great God that you are. You have always, oh, God, made ways. You've always opened doors. You've always made provision. And, God, we thank you right now. And, Father, we pray with our brothers and sisters that have joined us from all over the world. All over, we've come together this morning. Oh, God, for these few moments of word and prayer. And, God, we thank you for the fellowship. We thank you, oh, God, for the agreement that I feel right now with my brothers and sisters. And Lord, I want to pray a blessing upon every one of them, my God. Oh God, it's not always about a, a physical or a tangible need, but there are needs on this call right now. There are needs on this line right now. There are needs, oh God, in the chat. The needs are there. The sickness, the, the oh God, the need for, oh God, reconciliation, the need for you to make a way. Lord, the needs are there. But Lord, every person on this this line. I am praying for a blessing for them. Something that they need. Something that they desire. Something they've been praying about that has not yet come to fruition. God, I'm praying for them right now. And Lord, if it's of a tangible nature, I am praying for you to make a way. God, I'm believing you right now for somebody that may not have a job. I'm believing you right now for somebody that may not have enough money. I'm believing you right now for somebody that has a physical need. Lord, there's not enough for the mortgage. There's not enough Enough for the light bill, but God, they have sown a in the past. Lord, I need that harvest to, oh God, to quicken itself. I need that harvest to, oh God, accelerate and get to them right now because you've seen their sacrifice. You've seen their giving. You've seen what they've done. So Lord, bring forth the harvest that they need to meet the need. God, you make the way. God, you open the door. God, you make the provision now. Oh God, you relieve the anxiety and the stress of lack in the name of Jesus. And God, we have confidence in you, God, that you will indeed make a way. God, we trust you. We honor you. We love you today. And we thank you for every believer that has joined us. And God, we trust you now. Oh God, for the deliverance of the many names that are on our prayer list today. And God, as we go before the Lord in prayer, as we come before you, Lord, in prayer, we're praying for the Dixon family and the Nunn family. God, we're praying for greater Refuge Temple of Durham. We're praying, my God, for the homeless, for Jimmy Haynes. We're praying for Refuge Temple of Burlington. We're praying for the Dykes family, the Pew family, the Simpson family. We're praying, my God, for the McWhite family, for the Slay Sproul family. God, we're praying for Mrs. Lloyd. We're praying for backsliders today. We're praying for Jesse Harrell. We're praying for the homeless and the jobless. We're praying for Linda Broomy. We're praying for Pat Lee. We're praying for the Bobbin family, the Nash family. We're praying for Jack and Mary Simpson. We're praying 
praying for Tyreek and Donovan today, God. We're praying for Herman. We're praying, oh God, for missionary Leah. We're praying for Sister Batista. We're praying for the Dar Sister Dargan today. We're praying, oh God, for Sister Elizabeth Anderson. We're praying for the Cleckley Thompson families. We're praying for Grace and Andrea Punsey. God, we're praying for Deidre. We're praying for a kill today, for Carlos today. We're praying for the Hill Phoenix employees and their families. We're praying for Deacon Raymond and Sister Bessie Johnson today. God, we're praying, my God, oh God, for the Wilson Robinson family. We're praying, oh God, for Elder and Mother Young. We're praying for the Callaway Kennerly family. We're praying for Jerry Taylor and Kermit Clavon. God, we're praying for the Shepherd family. We're praying for Queen Powell, for Dorothy Spellman. We're praying, oh God, for the healing of Brother Chris Wright. God, we're praying today, Lord God. We're praying, my God, for Mother Eula May Edwards. We're praying for the Lee family, for the Hernandez family. We're praying for the Butler family. We're praying for Bishop Howard Sweeney, Deja Grange. We're praying for Charm Davis, for Hezekiah Haynes. We're praying for Bishop Alfonso Brooks today. God, we're praying, my God, for Sister Smith. And God, for every name that's appeared on the chat. If we didn't call the name, God, you read the name. And we lift these names up to you now. Oh God, that whatever their needs are, whatever their hearts desire, whatever their affliction is, God, that you would step in and undertake for them. Lord, your arm is not too short that it cannot reach us, my God. Your ear is open, oh God, to our cry. You hear the cry of your brothers, oh God, your sons and your daughters. You hear the cry of your people. You hear the cry of the distressed and the oppressed. You hear the cry, oh God, of that person that's weeping in themselves. But Lord, you know how to deliver. So God, stretch out your hand. God, we pray today for the sick, Lord God. We pray for Catherine Green. We pray for Toy Carter. We pray for Ava Dorsey. We pray for Marlette Taylor today. We pray for Mother Clark. We pray for Lady Maxwell. We pray for Mother Jenkins today. We're praying for Pastor Jackson. Oh God, we're praying for healing. Oh God, for Elder Brandon Carr. We're praying for Brother Wiggins. Oh God, for Brother Sherrod. We're praying for Mother Garland and Deacon Garland. We're praying for Mother Betty Jenkins today. We're praying for Mother Foster, Mother Tanaj, Mother Simmons, Mother Holman. We're praying for Dwight Wade and for Joanne Cousin, for George Lloyd, for Crystal Ebron, for Duchess, oh God, Horton today. We're praying, oh God, for every sick person. We're praying for Polly Roberts today. We're praying for Lakeisha Coleman, God. We're praying for Levi Richardson. We're praying for Sharon Taylor, God. We're praying for Talisha Woods today, for Doretha Rucker, oh God, and Valerie Bridges, and every other person that may be sick today. Maybe they're in a ICU ward. Maybe they're in a COVID ward. Maybe they're in a hospital or a rehab center today. Maybe they're in a nursing home, my God. Maybe they're in their own home, but if there's any sick among us, God, any sick on the line, any sick name of a sick person that's been posted, God, we're praying now that you would heal. Lord, you're the healer. Oh, God, your hands heal. Oh, God, your voice heals. Your touch heals. Lord, your blood heals today, and we trust you as the healer right now. Go and minister health. Rebuke the hand of the enemy that's afflicted, that is made sick. Oh, God, and touch in the name of Jesus because our trust is in you. God, we pray for the many grieving families. Oh God, I pray for Escarita today, Lord. Oh God, I pray, my God, for the Taylor family, the White family. God, I pray today for the Carter family, Lord. I pray, oh God, today, oh God, for the Giles family. God, I pray, Lord God. Oh, Shatana Lobosi, Taye. Oh God, I pray for the, oh God, for the Hopkins Bryan family. God, I'm praying today for the McLean Melvin family. I'm praying, my God, for the Gary Porter family. I'm praying for every grieving family everywhere. Oh God, I'm praying for the man's prior family. I'm praying, oh God, for everyone that lost a loved one. I'm praying for widows and widowers. I'm praying, oh God, for children that had to bury parents and parents that had to bury children. God, I'm praying today, God, that you would touch, oh God, and heal and deliver. I'm praying, oh God, because the grief is so heavy for some of us. Oh God, the bitterness is heavy, but God, you are the God of all comfort, and God, I beg you to visit with these souls. Oh God, bring them the peace that passeth all understanding. Bring them, oh God, solitude. Bring them, oh God, oh God, serenity. Bring them, oh God, to a place, oh God, of resolution, but knowledge of knowing that you are with them, that you have not abandoned them, you have not left them, but you stand with them now. God, I pray for the totality of the body of Christ. I pray for every apostle, every pastor, every apostle, prophet, even evangelist and teacher. God, I pray for every, oh God, elder, every bishop. I pray for every mother missionary. I pray, oh God, for every, 
deacon, every minister, every psalmist, singer, every usher, every young person, every musician, God, every disciple and follower in the body of Christ. I pray, God, that you would take from us the spirit of selfishness. Oh, God, because some of us are not selfish in money, but we're selfish, oh, God, in sharing wisdom and knowledge. We're selfish in sharing our support. But anywhere that we're tied into self, anywhere we're tied into selfishness, God, we rebuke it now. We confess it and we repent for it now. And help us, oh, God, to love and to trust. Help us, oh, God, to support one another. Help us to support each other, God, in this time and this era. God, the body of Christ needs unity. The body of Christ needs power. The body of Christ, oh, God, needs to eradicate division. So, God, help us today. Help us to do this right. Help us to do it that will please you. Help us to sow, my God, in this season. Help us to reap what we've already sown, oh, God, according to your word. And, God, bless, oh, God, release blessings upon your sons and daughters. Release deliverance, God, upon your sons and daughters. Release revival among your sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for first responders everywhere. We pray for doctors and nurses and orderlies and technicians. We pray, oh God, oh God, for custodians, cafeteria workers, dietitians. We pray that you would bless them, whether they're in hospitals or nursing homes or rehab facilities. God, cover them. Remember our policemen, our firemen, oh God, our EMTs. Remember our delivery men, God. Remember our bank tellers. Remember all those that every day face the public. God, cover and protect them and keep them safe. God, we pray for teachers and students as we move back to school, God. We pray for the covering of your blood upon every child, upon every teacher, Lord, upon every administrator. God, we pray, my God, that you would protect us as we act in wisdom, oh God, in faith. God, cover and protect us. Lord, we're praying and we're believing you, God, for abundant harvest. God, I pray for every believer today that is waiting for something to happen, that you would make it happen now. God, I lift up Maurice today. Oh God, touch him now. Oh God, heal him now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, save and deliver because we know that you're able. God, touch right now by your power. God, move by your hand. Oh God, do it today, God. Lord, we love you and we trust you and we acknowledge you for who you are and what you are able to do. So God, bless us today. Lord, keep us safe in this storm. Lord, keep us safe in this storm. Cover us, my God, in your precious blood. Remember our brothers and sisters in Texas, God, Lord, give them relief and give them deliverance and keep them now. And Lord, as you do all of this, we give your name, the glory, the honor and all the praise in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Everybody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. This is my confession, my declaration today. I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. I sow. I'm not ashamed to say it. I sow. I shall reap an abundant harvest. I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. I sow. I shall reap an abundant harvest. God can't lie, saints. I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. I sow and I shall reap an abundant harvest. I'm, I'm somebody that's waiting for something. There's about to be a release in your life. There's about to be a release. Why? Because you sowed. Because you sowed and because you sowed, you need to expect that abundant harvest. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I trust the Lord. I sow. I shall reap 
and abundant harvest. God bless you today. Thank God for each of you who have joined us in this prayer. I pray that something was said to encourage you and that your faith is increased by our time together in prayer and in the word of God. And we thank God for each of you who take the time each morning to be with us in prayer. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. You can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day long. This service will be uploaded um, to our Facebook page and also to our YouTube channel, and you can access it there. You can share it with somebody that you feel like will benefit by this. And please, please, if this is blessing you, share it with somebody else. Somebody else needs to hear the word of God, be encouraged and be supported. And if this is helping you, please do me the favor of sharing with somebody that you love and that you care about. We also um, have our um, podcasts that are available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And once again, the messages are there for your encouragement. If it blesses you, please, please do me a favor and share it with somebody else. You can listen to our radio broadcast. It airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. at GregoryGospel.com. And thank you for those that support the radio broadcast. We appreciate that so, so very much. And as always, you can sow. You can sow. Refuge Temple is good ground. I can say that honestly. Refuge Temple is good ground and our ministry is good ground. And if you want to be a blessing, you can do that. Thank you for those who have. But if you want to sow, you can sow into Refuge Temple. Send a gift to P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 272 Or you can give online at our website, Refuge Temple, N as in North, C as in Carolina.com. That's www.refugetemplenc.com. Or our cash app, that is simply the dollar sign, the number one, Refuge. And thank you for every sower into Refuge Temple. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. But thank you most of all for supporting and being a part of the morning prayer. I want to give a personal shout out. Today is my sister's birthday. Missionary Angela Henderson, today is her birthday. We have been partners in faith um, as long as we've all been. We got saved on the same day, um, 40, 45 years ago. We got saved on the same day. And she has been a partner in faith, always supportive of my ministry, and just a wonderful prayer warrior, wonderful woman of God. And today is her birthday. So happy birthday, Angela. I love you. I appreciate you. And I thank God for you. Look, keep praying for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our family. Pray for the church. Pray for the ministry that's are attached to our hands that God would bless us. Keep us in prayer. Lift us up in prayer. Look, be safe today. Be careful today. Um, if you if the roads are icy, if you don't have to go out, don't go out. If you can wait, please wait. Please make sure you're properly um, warm in your house and the Lord bless and cover you today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day until tomorrow. This is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.